did you know that music was involved in creation when God spoke? He spoke the Hebrew letters, and each Hebrew letter has an equivalent musical note associated with it. So God literally created the universe with frequency waves and musical sound. Many times, King David, God's anointed king, wrote the Psalms that are songs. Song in Hebrew is Shira. I found that out because that was my neighbor's last name, Shira. And a friend of mine from Israel sent me a song book and it said Shira on the front. And I thought that was so interesting that my neighbor's name happened to be song in Hebrew. In many of the Psalms, the songs of King David and Asaph, it'll say to the chief musician, and it'll tell what kind of instrument that he was supposed to use. And also it gives an indication of the timber, the sound that is required for the song. So it's interesting that the whole earth is based on frequencies that can be heard with the ears and even the tectonic plates you know they make a sound and they produce a frequency and the bible says that the trees clap their hands so let me just show you the quaking aspen of colorado Everything rejoices with God's glory. And there was even a recording of a series of a bunch of crickets. And it was really interesting when they did some sort of research with the sound of these crickets, they sounded like they were praising God. And even the birds of the air, God gave them a voice to sing different melodies and harmonies. Our bodies are made up of all kinds of different audio frequencies as well. Our heart is the beating rhythm of life. And so it is said that during creation, God spoke the Hebrew, which was music, because each of the Hebrew letters had a musical note attached to it. And so there's been musical researchers, musicologists, that have studied the Psalms and tried to match the letters with the musical tones and created what the original sound of the Psalms sounded like. Jesus went out to the Garden of Gethsemane singing the Hallel, which is part of Psalm 119 and it includes Psalm 118. God gives breath to everything that has life. And so everything that has life has a frequency of sound, a musical tone, a note. Sometimes our ears cannot even hear, say like, you know, a volcano, for instance, all of the magma and lava flow down below has a deep, guttural sound that you will hear when you see a volcano erupting and during earthquakes there's a vibration of the earth that's taking place and so sound is something God created our ears so that we could not only hear sounds of nature but that we're moved in our hearts with feeling and emotion by the music that God created. And so this is what they've discovered that some of these frequencies actually have the power to heal in our bodies. So King David, a man after God's own heart, he was God's anointed king. He played and prophesied on the lyre and the harps that he had crafted there in Jerusalem. and. Hebron, 
And so he would prophesy God's word. He spoke and was prophesying the future coming of the Messiah who would be the savior of the world. And all of his harp playing had a profound effect on King Saul. As you know, King Saul was tormented. These evil spirits would come to him because he was not staying faithful and loyal to God and rushed ahead of God and tried to come up with what he thought he should do to do a sacrifice before he wasn't supposed to do it. It was truly interesting that Zola Levitt realized that in the gestation period of a baby, things like the development of the hearing, the development of the eyesight, the development of the beating heart, they all corresponded to God's special appointed days known as the Moed, the feast days. That was incredible to me. You have to hear that to even just get the whole gist of the incredible way that's connected to the growth of a baby in the mother's womb. Not by chance, but God created the baby in the womb and created the eyes, the nose, the ears, the hearing, everything in a way that acknowledged his glory that they're created in the image of God. And one of the most exciting things that Zola Levitt discovered, and I'll try to put a link to this, but the seven feasts and the gestation of a baby was the name of it. And you're not gonna believe this, but he basically discovered that it has to do with when things develop in the womb. And he discovered that the baby develops its hearing, the capability to hear outside the womb for the first time a baby can hear on the first day of the seventh month of the gestation period, the Feast of Trumpets. Isn't that incredible? The hearing's developed. So even though King David was called the chief musician, it's really God that is the chiefest of chief musicians. And he created music and everything that lives and breathes and has their being in the Lord, in all of creation is alive and thriving and praising God in its own capability of vibrations. And if you recall, I did a video about the resonating trees where um, Stradivari would go get the wood that resonated in a special forest for creating the violins, the Stradivarius violins and cellos, and they would make basses. And I did a whole video about that a couple of years ago called the singing forest so even the trees and the plants are praising God and as you study them and it gets in depth in all kinds of botany and scientific studies you'll see that every living thing is resonating and vibrating and responding to the other trees they found that these resonating trees respond to each other so it's astonishing and anybody that says that God does not exist is a fool as the Bible says because everything is so in depth scientifically and auditorily that there's sounds and notes that we have never heard with our ears and so we'll hear them when we go to be where the Lord is and it's true that sometimes just listening to nature to birds singing and just being around animals that you know they have their own sound that they produce their own little voices 
and it can be a great comfort to our heart and our soul and can kind of heal us and restore us when we feel distressed, when we feel sad or in grief or in mourning. Sometimes these things are things that really help us. So God didn't just leave us without comfort. He sends forth his Holy Spirit, his breath, his Ruach HaKodesh, and his spirit brings us all the comfort through all of these details in creation and animals and birds and the frequencies that they make. So let me just show you some of the Hebrew musical markings in Psalm 119. Aleph. So this is giving you the Hebrew letter of the alphabet, which has a musical equivalent. You'll see these musical markings. It keeps going. This is the Hebrew letter Bet, and it goes down Gimel. See right here? These are musical notations in Psalm 119. Dalit. And goes to the next page. Hey. Of. It's really not supposed to be a W, it's a V. There's no letter W in Hebrew. Zayin. It just keeps going and it gives you all of these Hebrew letters that are musical markings. And you can see Yod. On the next page, Mem. Nun. Here's the next one, Samak. And it keeps going, giving you musical notations. Kav. page that would be the end of Psalm 119 so it gives you basically that's part of the Hillel that Jesus was singing with the disciples on his way to the Garden of Gethsemane that they came to arrest him right after the Passover Seder so they were singing the Hillel and King Yeshua was singing songs. Since King David was God's anointed king, and he wrote the songs, the Psalms of God's word that prophesied about God and the Messiah that was coming in his own lineage. And while, while he was playing the instruments, then you know he was a man after God's own heart. You know that God is the chief musician. The Lord, Yeshua, HaMashiach of Nazareth, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the other major forever anointed king of the Davidic dynasty. He is a singer and a musician. So the next time that you read the Psalms, the songs of King David, you'll know that the Holy Spirit was flowing through King David so that he was prophesying the word of God that foretold these things that were coming in the future. And the words that you're reading reverberate in your spirit, whether you know it or not. And now they can recreate these songs from the Hebrew letters that each have a musical note attached to it. It's truly stunning to realize that God used music when he spoke creation into being and the whole earth vibrates with his frequency. And you know what? I named my album, my music album in 2006 that I put out, um, it's called my frequency, meaning to be on the frequency of God. I just thought that you would find this to be very interesting. I was talking a little bit to Nancy Anderson about it, and I just thought maybe it'd be cool to make a video 
and just remind you of the singing trees and their wood resonates at a frequency that can be turned into wood to make musical instruments. And remember I told you the story about how I had published my book about the almond tree and then the first Christmas after my mom passed away, DW Drums went to an almond orchard and got the wood. DW Drums shockingly made almond tree drum kits, which I would like to buy, but too pricey. It's, it's a, um, what do you call it? Collector's set. But those trees happen to be the exact age of the time that my mom and I lived together. 28 years and those trees were approximately 28 years old and I thought that was stunning and never before has the almond tree been used to create musical instruments but they were in the drums and of course I'm a percussionist a drummer and timpanist and all of that that's what I studied in school and um, you know was a singer and in a lot of choirs and on some recordings and things like that in high school and so we went to Disneyland to perform and things like that um, anyway I did a whole music album and the very day that I went in to master it it was the birthday of Moses <laughs> so it was pretty interesting the timing of that I don't think anything's coincidence and I think God is in every bit of his creation, revealing himself through every bit of it. And remember that the leaves of the tree of life are for the healing of the nations. He is the tree of life and his word are the leaves. That's what pages of the Bible are called, are leaves. So we are healed by the Word of God through the Holy Spirit's breath into us. Don't forget to listen to God's Word. It reverberates with frequencies that fill your soul. Until next time, Shalom for now. time.